I want the first five that start the game in there right now, okay? On a cold January day in Northwest Missouri, Skip Shear prepares his team for their last scrimmage before their upcoming tournament in Chicago. And get back and get everybody organized. The only tournament of the year for Conception Seminary College basketball, one they've been preparing for since October. Nick, get in the corner. But how did a coaching veteran come to lead future pastors? It started with a monastery's desire to blend spirituality and sport. The seminary really began when the monks first came in 1873, so we've been in this business for quite a while. It's not only uh, the academic formation, but it's also what we would call character formation. Tucked away in tiny Conception Junction, the Conception Abbey Monastery and Seminary College is home to over 90 students and 40 monks. A small population, but still one of the largest of 40 schools of its kind in the country. It's great to have uh, the focus that comes from a smaller academic community, but also the faith community. Um, that's what uh, makes this experience pretty unique. Chartered in 1886, the school offered classes at the high school and junior college levels until moving solely to seminary work in 1942. Since then, it's become a landing spot for young men seeking priesthood. I think there's a lot of uh, stereotypes that go with it, with Hollywood and movies and, and that about what the way religious life is and priest, priestly life. A smaller community, it really helps in the process of discernment. Uh, for understanding that call. Students here live a life of structure and self-discovery as the school prioritizes building the character as much as the mind and they apply it in the classroom, the church, and even on the court. With this program, with the basketball, it's a great opportunity uh, for them to have another outlet that patterns the same kind of disciplines. Basketball at the seminary is nothing new. Some of the earliest teams date back a hundred years, but it was never the most organized operation. Groups coached by students themselves, mostly playing pickup games with local fraternities. We never won. <laughs> we were outmatched and uh, when our father Albert really encouraged me to try to get something set up so that our guys were evenly matched. That changed in 1997 when the seminary was looking for a new wellness director. The priesthood is probably one of the most unhealthy professions in the country and there's a lot of interest so forth by the bishops to try and straighten that out at the seminary level. We did some asking around uh, through some of the coaches and that and uh, Skip was suggested to us. Skip Shear's hiring was a win-win for the college. It brought a basketball IQ never before seen at the seminary, and Shear would soon discover this was also unlike any job he'd ever had. I want to Andy guard the guy inside. And if that's, if that's what you would rather me okay. do is stay okay. outside, then I'll do that. Okay. We'll, I mean, I we'll see when we go back. You know, when we go back, maybe it can change. All right, now let's see if we can run. Go. Here we go. One, two, three. When many coaches reach a certain age, they become journeymen. Skip Shear is no exception, but he never thought his journey would lead him to the seminary. I had no idea that this place even existed when I came here. I mean, and I'd lived in St. Joe since 1980, but I never knew there was a Conception Abbey. That was nearly two decades ago, but Shear has been both a teacher and student of basketball since his college days. I would come home from practice, particularly at West Point. I'd come home and just write stuff down, and I had notebooks full of stuff. West Point refers to his first job after graduation, a spot on legendary coach Bob Knight's staff at Army. Shear reunited with him several years later as a grad assistant at Indiana before making his way to Missouri. There he bounced around schools before landing the head job at Missouri Western, then joining Steve Tapmeyer's staff at Northwest in the mid-90s. Not long after, he began working for Conception Abbey. We started a program here where we give fitness tests and then from the scores of that I prescribe an exercise program that everybody is supposed to do on their own. I think some of the other guys who are less athletically inclined, they, they, they're a little standoffish at times. The year that I got here, uh, they knew that I was a basketball coach and they got some information in the mail about this tournament in Columbus, Ohio and asked me if 
I would coach the team, having no idea what was here or anything. The tournament, which hosts about a dozen seminaries from around the country, is the only outside competition for Conception all year. Coach Shear's team has won the title four times, twice in Columbus and two more in Chicago. It's a far cry from the grind of a college schedule, but the journey to the tourney has shown him just how unique the job is. In college basketball, you suggest them things and you're kind of messing with people's games, or at least they think that, and uh, that never happens here. Uh, they're pretty much all eyes and ears. Hit him right there, hit him, hit him. There you go, boom. Coach can sometimes, you know, get get a little excited, and he wants he wants us to, to play our best. Dylan, Dylan, you run three out front. Nick, you set the screen. Watch out. We are all college age, so we treat us like a college basketball team. And uh, he gets after it, and he, uh, it, it's it's for real. Well, why don't you get there, huh? No, you weren't. You were on this side. Get out there. Let's go. His personality is very steady, and that's important. Uh, I think he's he's a good coach. And the basketball team, they really do look up to him. Now let's get with the program and run the stuff. Run your break. Get everybody to the five spots. Go. I'm not Catholic. And one of the few people here that is not Catholic. And that I didn't know what that would be like going in, but it's not a factor at all. And uh, it's great to have that kind of support. Let's go! Okay. I gotta have you run in the break. You're lost out there. Now when we run pit. Not the talent level that I'm used to coaching, but Kids that are receptive, kids that work very, very hard, uh, will do just about anything for you. So I enjoy that. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Let us start thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us. At what point does a young man choose to become a priest? What makes him decide to devote his life to the church? These are questions most seminarians will hear, but the truth is, it can be hard to explain because there's no one way that it happens. I was dating a girl and I uh, in a good relationship with her and uh, I just felt uh, God was calling me to do something, something greater with my life. Being able to travel around to a large number of churches throughout Western Europe, uh, I started to, to really feel an inclination and a calling to, to discern seminary. Discernment, it's what the seminary life is all about, figuring out what this perceived call from God really means. It's a process that requires time, prayer, and quiet, part of the reason why Conception Abbey is so secluded, and part of what feeds into a full slate for the students. We meet at 645 for prayer uh, as a community. Classes will go all morning until mass, uh, right around the noon hour. Following Mass is a lunch. Come around 3.30 or so, you got a little bit of a free time, and that'll take us right up to evening prayer. It's a full schedule. Many seminarians don't choose Conception Abbey. It's found for them by their bishop. They arrive knowing little about Conception Junction or the seminary schedule. They quickly find out that coping with it requires the occasional release, and some have found it through basketball. It's a lot of thinking, it's a lot of prayer, it's a lot of uh, using everything but, I guess, your athletic side and your competitive side. And so it's good to come out here and run around and, and bang it around a little bit. If I am all tense in the day, I like, it's good to come out here and just be angry, you know, just be ferocious and let it all out. This isn't necessarily the highest level of basketball. We got guys who have been pretty good in high school. We got guys who have almost never played in their life. The first practice we were fumbling balls. We were uh, running around the court not sure what to do. Come on, Dylan, you're better than that. Turn around. It was apparent that a lot of us hadn't really played organized basketball before. Um, but we've made large strides in the last few months. We pretty much tell the kids when they start that, you know, if you're going to be in this, it's a time commitment and you have to dedicate yourself to it. The education on the court comes quicker than any other at the seminary, with just four months to practice three to four times a week before their one tournament of the year in Chicago. And like Coach Skip Shear, that experience and that commitment is what stands out. <laughs> There are really no off-the-court problems. I mean, this life is so structured here, and, and uh, you know, basically you're dealing with very good kids anyway. They're all striving for the same thing, um, priesthood, eventually, and so you get to have some great conversations with those guys and then compete. We really get a lot of good bonding time, like in the, in the vans together. So I say we form, a, we form a special bond that other guys don't have. A bond they build for teammates, for faith, for life. Basketball and God are like my two favorite things in life, so I got to do both of them when I was here.